Hi there, I'm Eric Hong with David Walters Yachts. I'm here today aboard Lily, a 1987 DeFever 53 Performance Offshore Cruiser. This DeFever has been very well maintained. Fastidious owners, she is literally turnkey, ready to go cruising south this winter. She just had a thousand hour service done on her engines. All the mechanicals are fully functional, as well as we have updated galley, we have updated electronics, we have a nice tender, we have updated varnish. She's also getting brand new eyes and glass enclosure for the cockpit very shortly. So come check her out before she's gone. She's going to be in Annapolis, Maryland. And let me know if you have any questions about the boat. My cell phone is 410-279-3027. And my email is eric, E-R-I-K, at davidwaltersyachts.com. We'll start our tour of Lily up here on the bow. You can see this is a large area, great for entertaining and staying close to the water. There's room up here for chairs sunbathing, multitude of different activities. You can see there's a wide bench here with these great cushions as well as storage underneath. We have our shore power connections. We have an escape hatch here for the forward cabin, the pilot house, and above the flybridge. Swinging around, we can see we have a teak guardrail and teak cap rail, the bars of which was all updated this year. There's also a start link aboard. We have a maximum windlass with our articulating anchor. And of course, we have our Burgee staff with a, the Fever Yacht Club Burgee fitted. Quite appropriate. On either side of Lily, we have these forward aft passageways. There's an opening here for boarding, and there is a ladder that goes in that's stored on deck as well. That'd be Starboard door here for the pile house. We have another side boarding door here. And then we have an opening door into the cockpit. The cockpit is a great area for outdoor entertainment or can be enclosed with eyes and glass to turn this into a multiple season area for enjoyment. We have another opening door here for the ladder down to the teak swim platform. Turning around, we have this moving table here with nesting lounge chairs built in. These French doors was open up into the interior, into the saloon lily, and the winter furniture as well. And we're sitting forward on the port side. It's duplicated here, the same as starboard. And you'll see here the boarding ladder, which is our articulating staircase, which adjusts with the tide. From the cockpit, we proceed inside of Lily through these nice French doors. The saloon area aboard Lily is well equipped for entertainment and relaxation at all hours of the day. Starting on the starboard aft here, there's a desk with storage drawers and a chair. The audio-visual center here has a Samsung flat screen TV and Sonos audio. There's Sonos multiple zones throughout the entire vessel. The starboard forward, there's a day head, which is a rare option in the Fever 53, the galley. On port side, we have a bar. In the center, we have a coffee table with two chairs and a sofa. And on the aft side, we have another table with more storage. The saloon and galley are each equipped with an air conditioner, as well as hydraulic diesel heat outlets. Custom teak lines cover the nice and large picture windows. The day head here is equipped with a marine elegance head along with a Wally stone vanity. The galley has been recently upgraded with Corian countertops along with Kenmore Elite 
appliances. We have a dishwasher. Built-in double basin sink with instant generator. Convection microwave oven. Electric stove and oven. As well as a full-size refrigerator and freezer. There's also a Brown trash compactor installed as well. Beautiful teak and holly floors, along with these hatches here, which gain access to the engine room. Stairwell here on starboard leads down to the engine room and the private owner suite aft. From the saloon, we'll proceed down the aft stairwell into the master stateroom and engine room. You see this is a spiral staircase with a storage cabin in front of us. And at the base of the stairwell on the forward bulkhead is the hatch for the engine room. And then we have a washer and dryer unit by Bosch, which is a double stack unit. Turning out, we find ourselves entering the master cabin. Master cabin is well pointed with a Serenaline queen bed with storage beneath in these drawers. Swinging into starboard, we can see we have a very large hanging locker. Built in vanity will pull out seat. Sitting area, another storage locker and more drawers on the night table. Reading lamps, there's a mirror for the headboard. And on starboard, we have multiple storage lockers and drawers. There's plenty of ventilation here with every hatch opening, as well as a dedicated air conditioner with reverse cycle heat and hydronic diesel heat as well. You can also see we have a large mirror on the forward bulkhead. And just to the port side there, we have the entrance to the master head. The master head has been well upgraded with marble countertops, a marine elegance toilet, opening hatch, as well as a full-size stand-up shower with built-in teak seat and grate. Proceeding forward from the master stateroom, we enter the engine room aboard Lily. Under the Fever 53 POC, the engine room has standing headroom and is fitted with twin Caterpillar 3208 diesel engines. These produce 375 horsepower apiece, and they are turbocharged and active cooled. They each have approximately 4,100 original hours, and they just received an updated 1,000 hour service on both engines. To starboard, we can see one of the vessel's two generators. This is an Onan 20 kilowatt generator with just over 3,900 original hours. You can see the Raycor fuel filters below. Below this unit is one of the vessel's water tanks. And just forward, we can see the fuel tank here as well with a sight gauge. On the forward bulkhead, there's a 20 gallon water heater. There are two 20 gallon water heaters aboard. And in the middle is a hydronic diesel heater that produces heat for all the cabins in cooler climates. And so to use the reverse, reverse cycle heat, what this does is it uses diesel fuel to heat water, which is then sent around the boat and our fans that blow across the radiator to send that heated air to any cabin. See the other water heater here, another diesel tank, spare parts. We have another Onan gen set right here. This one has 4,700 original hours. See the hydraulic oil reservoir for the stabilizers. These stabilizers were recently serviced. More rate car fuel filters. On the aft bulkhead, we can see the main electrical switches here. We have the battery switches, as well as the upgraded charger and inverter system. Here we have a multi plus 3000 VA, 120 amp charger, along with a Skylab battery charger and Victron interface and Serbo GX interface with a control at the helm area. 
a built-in transformer. Just forward of the engines, we can see we have the Lifeline AGM batteries. It's been recently replaced. As well, there is a camera in the engine space for monitoring from the helm from any of the trunk plugs. As we go forward from the gallery, we enter the pile house. It's set up for all weather navigation. On the forward end of the pile house here, we have the helm station with video gauges, full engine controls, controls for pumps, lighting, and all emergency indicators for the boat. We have two Fruno Navnet 3D displays. On the right, we can see the chart plotters currently displayed. And on the left, we have the aft facing camera currently on. Proceeding to the left, we have a Maritron DSM 250 NMA 2000 repeater and a Furuno repeater as well. A digital display for the track stabilizers, a Victron display for the chargers and inverters aboard. And we also have a Simrad autopilot remote that pairs with the autopilot controller on the starboard side here. And the autopilot remote can be locked around boat as needed for adjusting the steering while underway. Also on the left-hand side, we have this great chart table here. And then beneath, we have access for the electrical panel and more storage along with pull-out drawers here for charts. Swinging around the port, we can see we have one of the side doors here. There are side doors port and starboard with bug screens. This area has its own air conditioner and uh, diesel heater outlet as well. We have this really nice leather bench with a built-in table. It's great for accompanying the skipper while underway or having a private area to work and relax on your laptop. You can see the view from around here is very nice. The windows are tinted. So it maintains a nice, cool atmosphere in here. And there's just a great view all the way around, minimally obstructed to see while you're underway. Uh, the lighting in here uh, does also switch to red while at night. We can do a, a quick look there. See overhead. There we go. We're in red mode. Back to white. Uh, there is a, a canvas cover for the windscreen as well. The next step on our tour is going to be to the flybridge. So we're seeing from the pile house on the starboard side up and aft, we have this opening door at the top of the stairs. Now it is an October day. It is a little bit cool and blustery. So as far as any wind noise on my microphone, but you can see here the flybridge offers a commanding view 360 degrees around Lily. We're here at uh, Zanheiser's in Salmas, Maryland. It's, it's a beautiful day. So we'll start a tour aft and we'll work our way back forward. You see on the back end of the flybridge deck, we have here Lily's tender. This is a 2002 Zodiac with a 40 horsepower Yamaha four stroke on the back. You see here, there's a solar panel to keep the dinghy charged up. Uh, there is also a full cover that goes over the tender and a cover for the outboard as well. The Davit is a Nick Jackson. It's in fantastic condition. The Yamaha gauges have recently been refreshed, so they're all set to go. And the dinghy has built-in lighting, built-in navigation lights. There's an iPhone holder. There's also a Fusion stereo with speaker built into the console. So the tender is all set to go for exploring the islands and those shower areas you can't get to with the mothership. It's nice it sits here on the cradle. Just forward of that, we have four fenders and their holders here. And there's also a stainless steel swinging door on the port and starboard side to get access to the dinghy deck. Otherwise, keep everyone nice and safe. This far of that, we have this great area set up for entertaining. Right now, we have a folding table out here of four chairs, all set up for lunch. Speaking of lunch on starboard here, we've got a 
completely set up outdoor kitchen. We have an electric chef, barbecue grill. We have upgraded coring countertops, and a stainless steel sink, hot and cold fresh water, as well as a large refrigerator with ice maker. There's also more storage underneath. There's room for a trash can. Just forward of that, we come up to a sitting area under the bimini, along with lots of nice cushions. These cushions have all recently been redone. You see they're in fantastic condition. We have a newer helm seat. This is nicely padded for hours of enjoying the scenery as you're cruising the islands. See that the seating wraps around here. It's also on this side as well. So there's plenty of room for lounging about or entertaining friends, having a cocktail up here at Anchor, multitude of purposes for this area. Uh, she's fully equipped for operating Lily at this station. Uh, we have obviously your engine controls, video gauges, front and aft net display. There's the controller for the stabilizers up here. Uh, we have the track pad, the point pad, I'm sorry, for the ACR spotlight, which is right there. There's a Furino instrument here, so those lounging about can see what's going on, speed, depth, that sort of thing, VHF radio, and there's also an auto power control over here. Now, the Arch itself has built-in fusion speakers with an independent volume control from down below. The volume can be adjusted from over here, so you can tune the sound down if you don't want it or speed it up. Uh, right above us, we have some lighting on the sides above the Arch. Uh, the arch itself uh, can lower, it's hinged, um, however, it would need a little bit of work in order to do that. Obviously, there's a bimini frame and that sort of thing, but uh, it is designed to be hinged uh, and lowered if need be. When lowered, uh, Lily would have a height of approximately 20 feet. And above on the arch, we obviously have our electronics, we have a Fruno radar, we have an aft-facing camera you can view from the Fruno displays. Uh, there is a track vision antenna, but it is out of service. Uh, the uh, owner has been using a Starlink connection with this TV, which has been working fantastically. And then we have a weather station up here, and the weather station has a monitor in the saloon. We also have uh, various GPS and uh, VHF antennas. So we'll proceed back down below, and uh, we'll start going through uh, the downstairs uh, of the main deck into the cabins in the engine room. Proceeding down below from the pile house, we're going to enter the guest quarters aboard Lily. There are two cabins here, both with ensuite heads and showers. To act, we have the VIP stateroom with a center line, a thwartships queen size bed with mirror on the headboard, night table on the forward side, and a hanging locker on the port side with opening port lights above. This area has a separate air conditioner with heating and cooling, as well as a hydraulic diesel heat. Just forward, we have a built-in vanity with seat and television. There's also another night table and mirror here. Moving into the head of board Lily, which you see is well-equipped with a Wally stone countertop. We have a vacuum flush head. as well as a full-size shower with built-in seat. Moving out of the guest cabin. Proceeding forward, we enter the second guest cabin, which has over-under single berths, as well as another vanity here with mirror and seat, another air conditioner with diesel heat, television, hanging locker, and a private ensuite bathroom with shower. 